Coming up on UT10 News, a look at the search for the university's newest provost. And we'll also follow the heroin epidemic hitting the Toledo area. Plus, reporter Amanda Beard has the highlights from last weekend's basketball doubleheader. Your news in 10 minutes starts now. Thanks for joining us. I'm Eric Burton. And I'm Megan Dietz. Just after 12 p.m. yesterday, water began pouring from the ceiling of Rocket Hall right outside the nursing advising office. That's right, Eric. Reporter Jenna Nance, with the help of our news team, looked into why emergency personnel were not notified of the situation. Jenna, I saw from the video on our website that water was just gushing. Why did UT police or fire not arrive on the scene immediately? Well, Megan, an automatic alarm did go off when the sprinkler system went down. However, emergency personnel were not called to the scene because the building did not close. That is also the reason why a UT alert was never sent out. As students entered the building and exited their classes, they heard the ceiling cracking under the weight of the water coming from the broken sprinkler head. Water filled the hallway and flowed into a dozen offices, two classrooms, the U College lobby, and the networking room, which controls the building's ability to connect with the rest of campus. Military and Veterans Affairs Director Lieutenant Haraz Gambari took control of the situation and began to block off the hallway area so students, staff, and faculty were kept safe. However, no UT official appeared to be in control of the situation until hours after the initial incident when Facilities Operation Director Jim Graff came onto the scene. Just the ceiling right over here in this hallway, you know, got most of the, the brunt of it. All right. Yeah, no, All right. Nothing, not a real disaster, which is good. There was definite damage, but the university is not releasing estimated costs for the repairs at this time. Live from Rocket Hall, I'm Jenna Nance for UT10 News. Heroin has become a public health crisis in Ohio. Reporter Courtney Shaw looked into the rising death toll of heroin overdoses and how one group is trying to make a difference. The CDC says Ohio has the second highest number of drug overdoses in the country. The Sheriff's Office says 150 people died of a heroin overdose in 2014. Team Recovery, a local group here in Toledo, is facing addiction problems head on. Team Recovery to me is spreading awareness and hope and letting people know that recovery is possible and there is help out there if you want it. This group was organized by former addicts who wanted to support others going through this problem. Every Tuesday night, they have a meeting to help support anyone that needs it. So many people are coming for so many different reasons, and there are recovering addicts in there too, but it's a great meeting because we can give each other feedback from the family side and from the recovering addict side. Next Sunday, Team Recovery will be holding a rally in downtown to educate people about heroin addiction and to celebrate the lives lost to overdose. I'm Courtney Shaw for UT10 News. Over 100 people attended the State of the City address, which was held at UT's Scott Park Auditorium. The mayor spoke of several initiatives she is taking to move the city forward, including building a new water treatment facility, growing downtown businesses, and a chance for citizens to voice their concerns with police. Coffee with Cops is an outreach program to improve community relations. It's a, a way that people can get to know the officers who work in that beat, uh, get to know me as the chief of police. The next Coffee with Cops is March 4th at the High Level Diner from 7 to 9 a.m. The search for the second most powerful position at the university is entering its final stages. There are four finalists interviewing for the provost and executive vice president of academic affairs. The candidates all come from different backgrounds, including three deans and a vice chancellor. Two candidates have already been to campus, and the next candidates will participate in two open forums later this week. The final decision on this opening is expected to be announced by the end of the month, and the new provost will start on July 1st. UT's Disability Studies program is expanding. Since 2001, students could only get a minor in the field, but that has changed. Reporter John McCarter has the details on the new major. Back in August, the university began offering a Bachelor of Arts degree in Disability Studies. It is the first of its kind in the nation. The program's focus is examining the social and cultural context of being disabled. If we pay attention to our culture and the ways in which our culture uh, creates barriers for people with disabilities and we try to remove those barriers, then we can have a more inclusive society. There are 15 people enrolled in the program who think that the addition of the new major is great for students. Thinking about social change, um, ways that that's come about in the past, how we can help perpetuate it um, in our time is really rewarding and I think prepares you well for not necessarily a career but also for life. To complete the major, students will need to complete 11 classes totaling 33 semester hours. For more information, please visit the UT10 News website. 
I'm John McCarter for UT 10 News. The 27th year of the Shapiro Essay Revision Contest is right around the corner. The competition will be held in the Fieldhouse from 2420 starting on Monday. Any undergraduate major can enter and participants will have two hours to complete a revised essay. We will give them a very badly written essay and they will not only revise it and edit, but they will make the essay their own and be creative as possible. There are 15 cash awards ranging from $75 to $500. The Confucius Society celebrated the Year of the Monkey on Wednesday. Reporter Zachary Gore went and checked out the festivities at the Student Union. While we celebrated our New Year's on the 1st of January, another New Year began a short month afterward. The Chinese New Year and Spring Festival start around the same time each year and are celebrated with carnivals and galas. And even though some people cannot make it back for the holiday, there is still a celebration here at the university. Um, we just think that it's very important to celebrate this Spring Festival because the Spring Festival is really the largest and most important festivals in China. While the Spring Festival's carnival included authentic foods, games, and crafts, the festivities were not the main focus. The festival not only celebrates the new year, but also the reunion of families. You know, it's time for us to be together and get rid of the bad things and then welcome a new year with hope. The Chinese New Year is about family and knowing that they will always be with you. I'm Zach Gore with UT10 News. Amanda Beard and this is your UT10 Sports Report. This weekend, the UT basketball teams continued MAC play as the women faced Ohio and the men took on Miami at Savage Arena. But first, the men's tennis team challenged the Detroit Titans on Friday at Shadow Valley. The men started off strong as they swept doubles while Stefan Sisko and Luko Vitasivic dominated their match. However, singles play would not be so easy for the Rockets. Detroit took second, fourth, and sixth singles while UT took victories in the first and fifth. The match was decided when freshman Vince Anzalone defeated Rafael Orentes to win third singles and give the Rockets the 4-3 victory. The men's next match will be home against Denison on February 19th. The Rocket women's basketball team hosted the Ohio Bobcats in the Rocket for a Cure game at Savage Arena on Saturday. The Bobcats took control of the court at the beginning of the game when bearing six triples in the first quarter. The Rockets were behind 42-24 at intermission. UT sophomore J.N. Barbell Harriet was the team's leading scorer with 13 points, followed closely by freshman Kayla McIntyre with 12. However, Kiana Black led the Bobcats with 38 points, including 10 made three-pointers. Ohio's 41 three-point attempts set a Savage Arena record. The Rockets would fall to the Bobcats 77-57. to This is one game. We've won four of our five, four out of our last five. And I think the good thing about tomorrow is it's a new day and we can get ready for our next opponent. The women will be look to bounce back in their next game tomorrow night at Bowling Green. The men were also in action on Saturday as they took on Miami in search of their fourth straight win. Juniors John John Williams and Zach Garber led the Rockets with 15 points each. Freshman Nate Navigato shot three for three from downtown and also collected five rebounds. UT held a double digit lead for most of the game and would go on to win with a final score of 93 to 48. With this victory, Toledo is tied with Ball State for first place in the MAC West. Rocket head coach Todd Kowalczyk told his team when they were up that it is important to stay focused. You know, I told those guys when they went in there, this is not garbage time. I want you to play and play Rocket basketball. Remove the ball and don't turn it over and take good shots. The men's next game will be this evening on the road at Central Michigan. Thanks, Amanda. Well, that's it for UT10 News. For the latest breaking news from campus and bios from all UT10 reporters, go to our website, ut10news.com. And remember, you can watch the live stream of our newscast production every Tuesday morning at 1030 on our YouTube channel. For Amanda Beard, Megan Dietz, and all of our crew, I'm Eric Burden. Have a great week, and stay tuned for more news from the UT campus.